Hey guys, it's Monica at Academic Phoenix Plus, and we have come a long way in this barrel. We have done the wood, the metal, and now it's time to make it even more realistic by putting some sort of icon or logo on it so that it belongs to something and make it even more unique. So let's go ahead and get started. I really want to put a little icon up here, some sort of text or anything that just kind of shows that it belongs to somebody. So let's have a little fun with that. I'm going to go to the text tool and just type in, let's say fine wine and it's using Verdena, which I guess I'm okay with. So again, this is going to be at the top. Whoops. Control T, scale it up a little bit, put it up here. Now, the fun thing about this is that we can, in fact, kind of arc this. So if you want to, you can kind of kind of arc it a little bit, and then you can kind of control that bend. So if you want to, you can do find wine and then put a bend on it. When you're done, just apply it. So it's going to look something like this. I'm going to double click on the text itself, and I am going to be using color overlay and maybe changing this to a kind of like a red color, you know, like a wine color, not pink. Let's go back to red. Um, red, red. There we go. Some kind of like a nice deep red. There we go. So that's going to look nice. Maybe I can widen it up a little bit like so. So now we need some sort of icon. Now up down here at the bottom, there is something that you can use, which gives you like a shape. So make sure you're in shape. And over here to the right, we have a couple of shapes that we can use. And um, hmm, it's a couple of options. I think I'm gonna choose, does this look like fine wine? Let's go ahead and make that shape, hold down shift. Right, that's gonna give you a path. Let's go ahead and scale it so that it fits a little bit in the middle here. So now this is considered a shape and not an actual object. So let's right click on it and we're going to do what's called rasterize. Rasterize means that it's going to treat it just like any type of drawing. Same thing with this text. I think I'm going to be fine with the way it is right now with fine wine. Uh, hold on. Maybe not. Let's see. What else can I do with this thing? Uh, control T. Maybe it's a little too arced, I feel. So something like that might be better. There you go, fine wine, let's move it back up. So I'm gonna take this, right click on it and rice dryize it as well. So if I save it and I take a look at it over here and click on reload, I now have, oof, this is why we always check. Fine wine is, this is pretty big. So let's go back, grab these two, control T and just kind of scale them. Again, we can save it again. We're going to reload and there we are. Now that we have the shape, I'm going to shape the color. This is going to be the logo, I guess. Let's double click on it and let's do a color overlay. So I'm kind of like this red color look, so we're going to stick to that. And just like before, we're going to create a folder, drag it in there. This is going to be my logo and let's create a mask. And just like we did before, what I'm going to do is use a brush to kind of brush away some of these um, textures. So there's a lot of options here that we have to create like a brush. And what I want to use is maybe something a little bit drier. So it gives me a little bit of that texture. And let's see, we got all types of brushes. So, I mean, it's up to you which one you want to use is like a million options. Um, if I use the brackets, what I can use with black is I can actually go in and kind of fade away some of this stuff. Now, this is if you want to paint it yourself. If you want it back, just go ahead and bring it back. Now, you can use the method that we did before, which is using a mask like we did here. Grab it and place it in. That's also another option, but I did wanted to show you that you can, in fact, paint some of this in and out. Um, I do want to go in, I'm going to zoom in a little bit and just kind of help. 
going to turn off the mask. So that's another thing that you can do is actually just turn it off. So if you say disable layer mask, it will, you will see it. And I'm going to go in and kind of burn it a little bit. So using the burn tool, which is over here, this will help kind of get this a little darker here just kind of help with um, changing the color variation same thing with dodge oh it's a color overlay that's why um let's see let's go ahead and control e and merge these two together rasterize it so it's permanent so now we can go ahead and lighten some areas up and we can also burn some areas which means that we can darken some areas up as well so I'm just trying to break it up a little bit because the color is too pretty and too perfect sponge means that it will desaturate it so that's also kind of nice we want to desaturate it make it kind of gray so it looks like it's faded and then when we go back into our logo and you'll you'll see that it just comes right back all right let's save this let's see what that looks like in Maya that was before and now it's looking much better it's a little faded, it's a little worn, it's looking pretty good. I'm actually pretty happy with it. Cool. So that was an example of how to create like your own logo and how to fade it yourself if you wanted to do a little bit more painterly style. Uh, let's see, I might go back and grab a paintbrush, make it smaller, just kind of fade, a, just eat up a little bit more. Just, you know, it's just a little too perfect. I need to break up, like really break up that texture. Not just fade the color, but also, there we go. And let's see, what else do we have? Maybe take this fine color, fine wine. We can darken it. We can use different method modes again to see what works. So again, darker color would be nice. Um, overlay, it's a little dramatic. Uh, maybe hard light, but I think I'd like to multiply seems nice let's go to darken there we go i like that one all right so we have covered a lot we've done wood we've done drip we've done lines we've done all sorts of amazing things we've created our own logo we've created rust all sorts of things it's looking pretty good now we could leave it like this but to be honest um in the industry all of this is actually all these pixels is actually data. So we want to make sure that we clean this up so that it will look as professional as possible. So the way to do that is using our handy UV map. Now this shows us the outline of our UVs. So what I'm going to do is grab my magic wand, click outside of the UVs, and you'll see that it makes a selection. All the empty space. Then I'm going to go to image. I'm going to go to select, modify, contract, and I'm going to say 10 pixels. Click OK. So what that's going to do is expand to pick 10 pixels. So now what I'm going to choose is I'm going to do a shift backspace. I'm going to choose a 50% gray and then click OK. So what's great about this is that it creates a border. This border is about 10 pixels from the UVs. So really what you have here is, is just enough information to be outside of the UV space. So in case the UVs move a little bit because you smooth it or whatever, you're going to be okay. But it also means that you can choose this color and it's not going to waste information. It's a 50% gray. It's going to, and your texture is as efficient as possible. You have all your textures, you have all your color, and you don't have any extra information, so and that's gonna be really helpful. So we're gonna save this as a PSD, but then the next thing I'm gonna do is going to save it in my source images because I'm gonna consider this done. So I'm going to file save as. I'm going to go to my source images, and I'm gonna leave it at barrel CLR, and I am going to choose TIFF. Now again, you can choose PNGs, you can choose whatever option you like. I'm a big fan of TIFFs, and I'm going to save. Make sure your compression is none. Click OK. Oops. You don't want layers. Uh, discard layers and save. Because we are we are going to keep our PSD in case we need to make any alterations. But 
we, in our source images, we now have a texture file. And this texture file is extremely efficient. It has no extra information. It just has the border and the texture, and that's it. If we take a look at the file size, you're going to see that's about 12 megabytes. But my PSD is about 112. So you definitely don't want to keep that one. Going back into Maya, what I'm going to do is click on this little guy right here, click on that little folder, and I am going to go into my source images and select it. No changes is going to happen other than the fact that it's now more efficient. And instead of trying to draw 112 megabytes of file, you now only are bringing in 12 megabytes, which is significantly faster. Let's go ahead and save. And there we go. We have a color map. We have covered a great deal in this tutorial. We have color. We have covered how to create rust. We did masks. We did our own painting. We've done a lot. So it looks really nice, but really we're missing a lot of some really great elements such as how to make this rise and fall, how to make things specular, how do we break it up so that it looks much more realistic. So I'm going to create a floor just so we can see it. It's always nice to see the render. I'm going to go to Arnold Lights. I'm going to use a physical sky and I am going to render and let's see what that looks like. You can see that it's very glossy. It's looking really good in some areas, but we also are, have, doesn't really look like a reference picture, but we're definitely have a really big step, which is the color. So in the next tutorial, we're going to be covering how to control our specularity. So we don't have, doesn't look like it's made out of plastic and we're going to really control how to the specularity and also how to make uh, what's called a butt map. All right, guys, I'll see you in the next video tutorial. We're going to be covering a lot. Thank you so much for watching. If you find this helpful, please share this video with your friends family or classmates, whoever you feel like might enjoy this type of tutorial. And also don't forget to like and subscribe. That really encourages me to create more of these types of tutorials. Um, also take a look at academicphoenixplus.com. You can download this barrel for free and you can use it and practice along with me. It comes with all the, all the files and textures and everything. So take a look at academicphoenixplus.com where you can download all of these resources and more for free. Thank you again for watching and I will see you in the next tutorial.